Are we all set? We are all set? All set. Are we all set? What a, what a deal. What if, we, what if I really meant it? Well, are we all set to go? No. Yeah. Are we all set to go? Yeah. That's what we want to be. We want to be all set to go because pretty soon you're going to be called on to go. That's right. Yeah. Pretty soon. You need to look forward to that. That's a good thing. That's a good thing. Pretty soon, I believe, God's going to take us out of this place. Takes out of this world. All those Christians, all those actually born in Christians, very, very soon. I believe that. Okay? So, and I'm waiting to expect, and it could be any minute, any day, any hour, week, month, perhaps. And then the further you get it beyond the week, why it gets, you know, very hazy out there. Lots of things are happening. But if we start looking at the world, it's continuing to go down, 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 down. Uh, this nation, at least, is what we see in front of our eyes. This nation is going, being destroyed, <clears throat> methodologically destroyed. Down, 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 down. So it's got to end someplace. But, I mean, you can't only destroy things to a certain point, and then you're all done. You can't destroy anything anymore. Then what happens? Well, I, we, I think maybe we'll be, we'll be spared seeing that happen in, in, entirely. Um, listen, uh, boys and girls, uh, we're in the Church of God. Uh, the Bible says is that the men are not supposed to wear hats uh, in church because it is a combination. Of, well, it, it, what it does is a separation between you and God. You're, all, you're okay. You're not wearing a hat. Okay, Covering your head separates you from God. Uh, as far as God's concerned, he, and that's the symbolism here. When you're in church, he, God wants to talk to you. You guys in particular, uh, are not to say that the, the women are any of the less, but the guys in particular who are the head of the families, are the priests of each family. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for blessing us and saving us and loving us. And Lord, uh, I just ask that you uh, open the eyes and ears and hearts of our understanding that we may receive more of you this day. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. amen. We don't know how many more days we have left. <laughs> That's very interesting to me. Okay, so let me just get a copy myself of this. We start off with this interesting, uh, I thought was interesting title. I am clothed, I am a clothed thought of God. I am a clothed thought of God. Now you think about what that means, that actually means. I am a clothed thought of Let me ask you a question. When God created the Garden of Eden, Adam and Eve, who wasn't named Eve at that time, Adam and the woman were running around. Were they clothed? Did God create them clothed? No. No, they were running around, weren't they? See? They were running around naked in the garden and didn't know the difference. That's the nice thing about it. It was just a natural way, like a nudist colony who, who tried to attain to that sort of thought process. But it's they didn't know the difference between running all naked and being, because they, didn't, they had no concept of being clothed. And what are you? Well, listen, what did it take for God to, to uh, let's say, uh, create Adam and the woman? Well, the first thing he had to do is he had to, he had to yep, that's right. God had to think about it. So you can't create anything unless you first think about it. Because if you think about nothing, that's what you get. God was thinking about Adam and the woman. Those are his thoughts. Adam and the woman were God's thoughts. They were his creation. Right? Like this chair. If I didn't, I didn't know anything about a chair, and I, in my mind I put it, and I, I created, that's my, my creation. We are God's creation. Literally, God is thought. He's invisible. Okay. He's immaterial. 
God is thought because that's what it takes to create anything. He's the creator, so he is thought. And we are, each one of us, are there for what? Well, guess what? God, God thought about you before he created you. Or you wouldn't be here. If God didn't think about you, you wouldn't be here, right? So what are you then? You're God's thoughts. Living inside of these bodies. Because just like God, the invisible God, the Bible says, you're invisible too. You're the person I'm talking to who's living inside of that body that you're in. You're invisible. Your thought, when you come out of there, you're still going to be invisible because you're God's thought. You're God's thought. He created you. And then what happened is he created Adam and the woman and they took up the, of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and God clothed them, didn't he? First thing he did is he clothed them. He took animal skins and clothed them. They were no longer naked. They were clothed. And he kicked them out of the Garden of Eden because they were sinners. He clothed them because they were sinners. He covered them. And then he kicked them out of the Garden of Eden. Why did he kick them out of the Garden of Eden? Because he didn't like them. They were sinners anymore. No. Nope. What do you think God kicked them out for? Because he wanted them to learn how to be God. Yeah. You know what the Bible says? Jesus said twice in the Old Testament, once in the Old Testament, once in the New Testament. Now, if the Bible is lying to you, forget it. Dump the whole thing if you can find a lie. God doesn't lie. Jesus doesn't lie. If Jesus said, ye are gods, guess what? Now, incidentally, that translates in the Hebrew and the, and the uh, um, Greek as angels. Angels. Now, wait a minute. What are the angels? Well, they're created by God, right? So, what's that make them then? If they're created by God, they're God's thoughts. Oh, do you see some common thread going on here? They're God's thoughts. Adam and the woman were God's thoughts. When it became Adam and Eve, that is, after she fell, she got the name Eve, okay, and they fell, were kicked out of heaven, ushered out of heaven, driven, matter of fact, the Bible says, out of heaven, okay. They were driven out of heaven to learn. That's what you're here for, to learn. Because God said, lest they become as one of us and take of the tree of life and live forever in that state. They were in a bad state. They'd just taken, they've eaten the apple of the good and evil. They knew good and evil. But it was one single, not apple in particular, it was one single fruit, let's say. Let's call it an apple. It was not two fruits, good and evil, because two different fruits don't grow on the same tree. Yeah. It's called the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Okay, it has one fruit. So in that one fruit was both good and evil. What happens when you mix good and evil? <laughs> You get evil. You get bad things. That's why we're not, we as Christians are, are admonished not to marry someone who's not a Christian. Because that's good and evil. Okay? And what happens then? Because the, the evil defiles the good. It's like throwing, well, the evil defiles the good. Now my point to you is this. God has thought he's the creator of the entire universe. God thought of you or you wouldn't be here, okay? 
He also thought of the angels, or they wouldn't be here, okay? But the angels were like Adam and Eve. In fact, I would think Adam and, not Adam, Adam and the woman were a type and shadow of angels. Because God was walking and talking with them, just like he did up heaven with, with his other angels. But they took the knowledge of good and evil and fell. And now you're here to get corrected. Now, I'm, go, I'm getting too far into this. Let me start with my actual message. <laughs> I am clothed. I am a clothed thought of God. That's the truth. That's exactly who I am. God thought of me. He created me. And here I am. And he put clothes on me. Now, if I was a pure, innocent person, totally, I wouldn't have to have clothes. I could be naked like Adam was when he was first in the Garden of Eden. Because I wouldn't think about, oh, nakedness, oh, not, all this sexual stuff wouldn't, get, wouldn't, wouldn't enter my mind, okay? But now I've got these clothes on. Temporarily. You know what I was doing this morning when I got up? I didn't put on my, look at this. I had to put on my, so much more stiff, suit of armor. This is what this is. This is what it symbol, symbolizes. These clothes I have on, that's my suit of armor. That's just a, a four or five hundred year old uh, symbol, more than that, actually. Okay, I'm putting on my armor. When you get dressed today, you're putting on your armor, you're putting on your clothing, you're covering. in an attempt to cover your sin. If you extrapolate that, in an attempt to cover your sin. I am clothed, I am a clothed thought of God. Notice the last thing, I have a comment there that I'm supposed to say, born again. Ah, I'm not always going to be a clothed thought of God. I'm going to go back to being my original state. Now let me ask you a question. Think about heaven and all the angels in heaven. Do you think they're walking around with different kinds of clothes and they've got a nice dress on their hair and this one over here has got this suit and that, or are they naked? Now, how were they first? Adam and the woman were naked. Sort of a good example, isn't it? What do you think about that? Do you think that the angels in heaven, those are all good angels now, the angels in heaven, do you think they have to be clothed to cover their sin? To cover themselves from God? No. no. So the angels in heaven, they're naked. One day I'm going to come out of this body, I'm going to go back to heaven, and I'm going to be a naked angel. And I'll never think about the sexuality of it at all. It'll just be part of the, my life style. You see? God created me. I'm his thought. Each of you, God created you individually, each of you. There are no two people perfectly alike. All together different. He created you, his thought. Now, he waits to see what you're going to do about it. Because you got contaminated with some bad stuff from Lucifer in heaven, and you were put came out of, pushed out of heaven, just like Adam and Eve were pushed out, driven, driven out of the Garden of Eden, which was a type of shadow of heaven. You yourself were pushed out of, as angels, were pushed out of heaven as well, a type and shadow of heaven, with Lucifer. Well, get pretty far, so now. See how deep this is now? Yeah. Oh, yeah. See what's really going on here? Gee, work, work. We're actually thoughts. That's all you got up there. You have nothing I can hold on to or touch or whatever. Okay? It's thoughts. I'm one of God's thoughts. And you're one of God's thoughts. Praise God for that. God thought about you before he created you. He created what he wanted in you. The Bible talks about uh, uh, the, uh, the potter and the clay. The potter and the clay. He's the potter. He's the creator, and you're the clay. Okay, so let's look at the first prophecy here. 
And sometimes we re review things uh, for a reason, because we're teaching here, all right? Now this is the prophecy, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1 through 3, and I'm going to read it again, and we're going to talk a bit about it. I want you to get this in your mind. This is very important for you to understand what's going on. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was a face of the deep. Spirit face of the water. And God said, let there be light, and there was light. Three verses, the first three verses in the Bible. Let's go back and look at them. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form. In the Hebrew, that means a waste, a worthless thing, vain. Sticks and stones can't be vain. It's got to be talking to the person now. Next word they have here is confusion. You ever seen a confused chair? Or a confused bench? Or a confused drape? Or a confused light? Or No. This is talking now about people. About thoughts. Thoughts. Oh, God created all thoughts. Because their thoughts are God's creation. Okay, we even know. And the earth was without form. That is a waste, a worthless thing, vain, confusion, worthless thing, and void. It was empty, uh, undistinguishable rune, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And that's, again, anthropomorphism, where you, where you apply man-like characteristics to animate, inanimate things. And so what we're looking here is this. And darkness, in the Hebrew, that means the dark, it means figuratively misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, wickedness. I don't have any chairs here that have those kind of characteristics. I don't have any plants or any anything. It's you. It's you. Oh, he's talking about you. What was you, what were you at the time? Well, you at the time was an angel. Well, what kind of an angel? Because there's two kinds. There's the pure angel, and there's the defiled angel. The pure angel is God's thoughts, pure thoughts. And the, the bad angel, the defiled angel, is God's thoughts, impure thoughts, which means they've been changed by Lucifer, Lucifer, Satan. Well, what kind of an angel do you think God was talking to, talking about when he said uh, it was uh, uh, in darkness, that's misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness was upon the face of the deep. And the deep is at, at an, at an abyss, a surging mass of dark water. What kind of, what kind of an angel do you think he was? A good angel or a bad angel? Bad angel. Because there were no people at that time. There were just angels. Oh, okay. So now what we got here is, uh, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness, all these bad things, were upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved. Now the Spirit of God moved. Upon the face of the waters, again, anthropomorphism, upon the face of the waters, see how... This is all kind of falling into places like a, like, a, like a puzzle put together. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. Well, where did the light come from? Well, it came out of the darkness. That's where it came from. And God said, let there be light. Light means in the Hebrew, illumination, including happiness. Happiness. Light. The light was brought forth. It was birthed from out of the darkness. For there was a surging mass of water, dark water, misery, destruction, death, all things that God didn't want in heaven anymore. He threw them down to the earth. And there was all these, this mass of surging water, because that's activity, okay? And, and that was all the, the dark angels, the bad guys. And God said, in that mass of surging water, let there be light. Pow! And out of that dark water came the light. Oh, see that? What kind of light? Well, let's look at here, John chapter, the uh, first footnote. John chapter uh, 1, uh, I'm sorry, John chapter 8, verse 12. Then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, he's talking now to his disciples and others, uh, then spake Jesus again unto them, saying, 
I am the light of the world. Wait a minute. Did we just read? God said, let there be light. And there, were, there was light was brought forth birth from out of the darkness. Yes. Then Jesus again said unto them, I am the light, the illumination, including happiness, brilliant radiance of the world. World here means cosmos. It means the universe. Jesus Christ himself said he's the light. Where did that light come from? Out of the darkness. Thus spake Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me, because he's like a lantern in the dark, and you're following him. He's like a torch at night, in the dark, complete darkness, and you're following him. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness. Wow. Shall not walk in what? Figuratively, we're talking now about misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. He that follows me shall not walk in those things. But you'll have the light of life. The light, that means the illumination. The illumination, I'm illuminating today, illumination, including happiness of life. That's life eternal with God. Now you get a little bit better picture of what's happening there. Let's go to the second footnote for 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 9. But ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, and holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Got it? Who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. That's you. That's you, 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 if you're saved and born again. That's to you, the call that goes out, the, inv the invitation that I give at the end of every sermon. I give an invitation. That's the call. Come out of darkness and into his marvelous light. Praise God. Now, when you look back and see those first three verses of Genesis, makes a big difference when you have little understanding what they're talking about, doesn't it? So let's proceed now. Let's go to the present. We talked about the beginning in Genesis. Now let's go to the present. Let's go to a type and shadow of the present. Let's go to something that is Old Testament, but refers directly to our present experiences today. Okay? Exodus chapter 3, verses 9 and 10. Two verses. Now this is God speaking. Now therefore, behold, the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me, and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Come now therefore, and I will send thee unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Out of Egypt. Don't we just talk about out of darkness? Yeah. Now we're going to talk about out of Egypt. Well, let's go back and read this now. Now therefore, behold the cry, that's the shriek, the screams in the Hebrew, uh, of the children of Israel. That's us who are saved now and born again. That's us, the children of Israel. That's what the Bible says. He is not a Jew that is one that is physically a Jew. He's one of his Jew that is mentally a Jew. That's us. Now therefore, behold the cry of the children of Israel. Now the children of Israel at that time we're living in the Egyptian land of Goshen, which is a type and shadow now. Think about this. Of the, it's like the, living in the United States, which is a good place, but living within the confines of this world, which is a bad place. So the children of Goshen, Egypt was a bad place. It was a land of the unsaved, okay? The children of Israel were living in the land of Goshen. They had it pretty good. They were living there, but they were living within the confines of Egypt, uh, whereas the United States which is a good place. All the world knows that the United States is a good place. They all want to come live here. And thank you to our president, they all are, <laughs> everyone. It's a good place. But the rest of the world surrounding it, because they're all coming from the world, are bad places to be. Yeah. They want to be here. Same analogy. Get it? Okay, now let's go on. Now, therefore, behold, so we're talking about your screams, 
right now the pressures and things that are being put upon you by the government. Now therefore behold the cry of the children of Israel is come unto me and I have also seen the oppression wherewith the Egyptians oppress them. Oppression means in the Hebrew, I've seen the oppression. It means I've seen the distress, the affliction of the people of my people. I've seen the pressure, 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 pressure to conform. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Romans 12:2. Be not conformed, but there's pressure to conform. Pressure to get shots. Pressure to do this. Pressure to do that. Pressure, 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 pressure. Okay, you know, this oppression also means distress, affliction, pressure. Crush, force, it means to hold fast, it means trouble, it means tribulations. That's what we're in now, tribulations. We can see that any place you look, there's bad things happening that you don't like. That's called the tribulation, the trouble, okay? And I have seen the oppression where with the Egyptians, now I see it interesting here. The Egyptians in the Hebrew, the Egypt, the word in the Hebrew means in, in the sense of limiting. Limiting who? The Egyptians are all the unsaved people of the world. Who are they limiting? They're limiting us. They're closing in us and trying to impress us, uh, oppress us, which is what they're actually doing. I've seen the oppression where with the Egyptians, Egyptians, Egypt was then, was then a type and shadow of darkness, which is gen relates back to Genesis 1 verse 2, a type of darkness for misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness, okay? I have seen. Uh, I have seen the. Uh, I've also seen the oppression where the Egyptians uh, uh, oppressed them. Come now, therefore, the God says. Come now, therefore, and I will send thee. And he's talking now to Moses. I will send thee unto Pharaoh. Now Pharaoh was the ruler of all the known world at that time. In effect, Satan. Pharaoh was a, 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 was Satan, a type and shadow of Satan. Who this is a quote now from two Corinthians chapter four verse four. four who is the God of this world. That was Pharaoh at that time. Because that's all the, the world. It, it, he was, uh, uh, Egypt was uh, 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 the strongest nation of any in the whole world. Pharaoh was, at that, was, uh, was ahead of that, okay? Come now therefore and I will send thee, these called Moses now unto Pharaoh, that thou mayest bring forth my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Bring forth, what do you think bring forth means again? means birth. Bring forth, birth, bring forth my people. And what is that? Well, if you're already my people, that's one birth already you've experienced, right? But if you get birth again out of Egypt, out of darkness, that's your second birth. That's called being born again. Your first birth is when they sent it to the land of Goshen, look at it like that. Your second birth is coming out of the land of Goshen coming out of Egypt, I should say, being born again. Type and shadow being born again. So uh, birth them, bring forth them out of the land of the unsaved darkness, which is all the other type and shadow being born again. How? How is that going to happen? Let's look at the process of being born again. We see the process? There's a process. Everything, it's process, process, process. Here's the process of being born again. Type and shadow of it. Exodus chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. I'm going to read those, the, the black face to get the concept. And Moses answered uh, God and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. For they will say, The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. And the Lord said unto him, what is that in thine hand? And he said, A hey, Lord, cast it to on the ground. And he cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. Moses fled from before it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. I should uh, and 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 take it. I should say later. But yeah, by the tail. And he put forth his hand and caught it, and it became a rod in his hand that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, hath appeared. 
Well, there's kind of a lot of stuff there. Here's what God's telling us now. He's saying, and Moses, now he starts off with Moses, uh, uh, Exodus 4, verse 1. And Moses, what's Moses' name mean in the Greek? Open the water. Oh, in the Hebrew, I should say. Yes, it means drawn out of the water. Oh, wait a minute. Didn't we just read in Genesis that uh, uh, of, the, of the water yes. uh, uh, that the light was drawn out of? Mm -hmm. Now we see Moses was drawn out of the water too. Oh, drawn out of the water, rescued. That's his. That's his. His name means drawn out of the water, rescued. Okay, drawn. I'm, I'm having here parenthetically drawn out of the dark, the deep, the water. Let's look at Genesis one, two, uh, uh, Genesis two, uh, one, uh, verse one, verse two again. And the earth was without form and, and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Ah, and he said, let there be light. And what was Moses now? Moses was drawn out of the water. He was drawn out of the darkness that he was in. Okay. Number one, however, in the back page. This is from Matthew chapter 3. It has to do something with water. Jesus, let's look at that. And Jesus... When he was baptized, baptized, baptized means make well, means fully, fully wet. It means to be washed, and that's a referral to uh, uh, I quote now with the washing of the of water by the word, by the word. That's a quote from uh, Ephesians five twenty six. The word meaning rhema, and rhema means revelations. Now let's go back and read the text. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went straight up out of the water. Somebody else went out of the water. Went straight up out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him. You see that? Moses was drawn out of the water, okay? Came out of the water, and Jesus was came out of the water. And what is the water? What is the water it says here? It, it baptized... Uh, uh, with uh, 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 washed, washed, and how does that refer to? Well, let's look at the quote again from Ephesians chapter five, verse twenty-six. Wash with the washing of water by the word, by the word. That's the water. The water is the word. The Word of God. It's interesting. Where I lived for 32 years was on the uh, shore of the, of the of Gulf of Mexico. I could look out my picture window in the front and see nothing but Gulf of Mexico. Wow. 32 years. That's why I chose that spot to live. Okay. I live for 32 years. On my right side was a swimming pool I could look at. But anyway, it was all there. So I was looking at the water every day. But then what happened is this last year they finalized it. They closed up the view in front of me. They built two apartment buildings in front of me. And now I can't look at the big water thing anymore. But you know, I just moved. You know where I moved to? Yeah. It was just, it just happened like that, to Lake Seminole. Now, wait a minute. So what's the big deal about that? Well, I look out my window this morning. I had this big, I'm on a second story a condominium. I look out my big window this morning and all I see is water. Ooh. Lake Seminole. Isn't it interesting? I've been attracted to water ever since I've been to Florida. Before, that's what brought me to Florida, water. And all I look at now is water again. A little different kind of water. <laughs> Gulf of Mexico had sharks. Be a little bit careful about sharks. They're, they're, but Lake Seminole, you know, swimming in Lake Seminole, it's got full gators, okay? But it's nice. I watched a guy yesterday come trolling along. I'm about 20 foot away from the water, up above. I'm 20 foot away from the, from the actual water. And as I look out, and I'm sitting there, and this guy comes by in his boat, little slow trolling boat, catches a nice big fish out there in front. I have little boats parked along underneath me there. 
uh, other people, and I have boats going by on Lake Sherman. They're fishing, no swimming. You go into the into the uh, complex. Uh, do not feed the alligators. So that means you can sell for that. No swimming. <laughs> But you know, that's a type of shadow of the world now. Before I was looking at, I was friendly, uh, looking uh, west, directly west, and, and, and uh, I was looking at the sunny evenings and, and, and the sun setting. Now I'm looking at the beginning. I'm looking due east. I'm looking at the rising sun. Rise, and it's the sun is rising. Yeah. Due east. That's the Jesus Christ. He is the sun. S U N S O N. Oh, okay. I got off of that. But water, 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 okay? So we saw now Moses was drawn out of the water. So was Jesus in, in that sense of the word. It went up straight out of the water, okay? And the water is what? Water we're talking about is the word of God. Ephesians 5.26. That's what's going to change you. That's what changed everybody is the water. The word of God changed them, okay? Now, let me go back to where we were here. It starts from the beginning, Exodus chapter 4, verses 1. And Moses answered God and said, But behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken to my voice. Guess what? I got the same problem. <laughs> so to all the preachers, okay, people don't believe. They will not believe us. We will not believe us, okay? I got thousands of people all around us who don't come to church, they don't go to church because they don't believe. But Jesus said, or uh, God said to Moses, oh, uh, 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 what happened? God said this. Uh, I don't have the word he said. Yeah, oh, oh he said, uh, I will send thee unto Moses. This is Exodus uh, 3, verse 10. I will send thee unto Moses. Or excuse me, I will send thee unto Pharaoh that thou, he's talking to Moses now, I will send you to, to Pharaoh that thou mayest bring forth my children, um, uh, 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 my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. That's what I do. That's what I preach. I'm bringing children out of the darkness of this world, out of Egypt, into the promised land. I'm saying, it isn't me, it's God's using me as a vehicle. I just work for God. Just like Moses, he was a vehicle for God. God works through us, okay? And he says to you, come on, let there be light. Let there be light. In your darkness, let there be light. And it's for Sam. You begin it. And what is that light? Wait a minute. You know what that light is? It's, it's got a name. It's called... Okay, so this, I should put, better say it like this. It's a description. It's called When you receive the light, you receive that description. A revelation. God is revealing something to you that before was hidden, completely hidden. You didn't see it. You were walking in darkness. All of a sudden, the light came on, and you got, you saw it. You got a revelation. Now let's continue here and let's see what's going on, all right? And Moses said, uh, but behold, they will not believe me, nor hearken unto my voice. That means to hear intelligently, consider, listen, obey, perceive, understand. For they will say, and here it is, the Lord hath not appeared unto thee. Now wait a minute, what does that mean? Let's look at it like that. Textually, it means this. The Lord hath not appeared unto thee. They're going to say, that means they're saying, the Lord hath not manifested himself unto thee. The Lord hath not revealed himself to thee in revelations. In revelations. If you have not received a revelation from God, you are not saved. Period. And the first revelation is Jesus Christ. That's the light. If you have not received the light, you are walking in misery, destruction, death, ignorance, sorrow, and wickedness. What kind of... Wait, let's start from the beginning now. 
What kind of people were these again? We forgot now, didn't we? I'll go way back to Genesis. What, what, in the earth was our form of void, but there was there was still without the form of void, the mass of, of, of water was misery, destruction, death, sorrow, ignorance, what, what, ignorance and witness. What kind of things, attributes are those described? A person. Those are people. What kind of people were there before Adam and Eve? Angels. Fallen angels. Who got drove to the earth. What did, what did what Jesus say to you, just now say to you? Uh, oh yeah, uh, John 8, 12. Come on, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. The light of life. He says here in uh, 1 Peter 2, 9, uh, that ye should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. You are an angel. But what is an angel? It's a thought of God. It's a thought of God. All originally created good. Then in Isaiah, God created the evil. He says so. For a reason. An ultimate reason we may not get into today, but a reason. Now let me continue where I was here. So Moses didn't want to go back to Egypt because he'll, I don't know, they're not going to believe me, okay? And, 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 uh, and they're going to say, that has not a, God the Lord has not appeared unto thee, meaning he's not manifested himself, revealed himself in a revelation to you. And the Lord said unto him, here's now, here it is. What is that in thine hand? Oh, now Moses was a shepherd at the time. And what was in his hand was a rod. A rod maybe this long or so with a kind of a hard end on the end. Uh, used to fend off wolves and the, uh, 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 <laughs> to, to chastise the sheep when they get out of line. It was a rod. And what, what, what did God say? What is that in thine hand? And Moses said, a rod. It was a shepherd's rod. Whose rod was it, incidentally, now? It was Moses' rod. Yep. Let's look at the second footnote uh, uh, on the back page. Mm -hmm. A rod. A rod is a branch as extending. What, now I have in here a branch. A branch of what? It's a branch of wood. It's a tree branch. Yep. Tree branch. Psalm 1, verses 1 through 3. Who are we? We are trees. Yeah. We are trees. So a rod is a person, okay, who's separated from the tree itself and, and uh, formed into a rod. A rod, a branch uh, of wood of a tree, is extending a tribe, also a rod, whether for chastising, that's correction, or ruling, that's a scepter, or throwing, that's a lance. Or walking, that's a staff of support. It's a rod. Now, whose rod was it again? Moses' Moses rod. Yeah. Now let's go back and see what happened. And God said, and the Lord said, cast it on the ground. Moses is standing there with the rod in his hand, because he's a shepherd, and God said, the Lord said, cast it on the ground. Yep. So, what did Moses do? He cast it on the ground. Shoo, there it goes down the ground. Clang, 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 okay? And the Lord said, cast on the ground. Now that incidentally, that action of casting on the ground parallels the action of God as he did cast the sinning Lucifer. Lucifer perverted God's thoughts. Mm -hmm. Lucifer, per that's what happened to Lucifer. He perverted God's thoughts. He did cast the sinning Lucifer and his evil rebellious angels to the earth. That's what happened. God drove them out. A third of the angels uh, went in, in the tail of, of uh, Lucifer. That's what the Bible says. Yep. Okay, a third of the angels believed Lucifer's perverted perversions of God's thoughts. Perversions of God's thoughts. Because Lucifer added his own thoughts to him and said, this is what the real, way it really is. Well, he was wrong. Only God's thoughts are perfect. 
And so he had, what happened is this, uh, 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 God said, what is that in thine hand? And Moses said, a rod. And God, and the Lord said, cast it on the ground. And, he, and Moses cast it on the ground. Notice that. He did what he was supposed to. He, he obeyed. He obeyed the Lord. He cast it on the ground. And it became a serpent. It became a twisting, winding serpent on the ground. It became Lucifer, Satan. That is the spirit of sin. It became the spirit of sin. Let's go to the third footnote in the back. The serpent is a snake from its hiss, properly to hiss, that is to whisper a magic spell, divine enchanter, use enchantment, and a, a, a synonym for enchantment is a charm, attraction, delight, fascination, allure, magic. Okay, and, and I, it's like this. Have you seen the pictures of in India where they have a cobra in a, in a little uh, box or whatever, and the cobra comes up out of the little box and just kind of twirls round, 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 hypnotically, hypnotically. Okay, that's what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. Enchantment, fascination, attraction, delight, alert, magic. Uh, uh, like it's like it's hypnotism, it's mesmerism, it's suggestion as employed in. Propaganda, and that's what propaganda is. Propaganda is, <laughs> how will I say? Altered truth. It's slightly altered in many cases, sometimes major altered, but altered truth. Okay, and that's what we hear today uh, coming at us from all different directions on the radio and the TV and so forth and so on. Altered truths or just flat out lies. Okay, all the truth is a lie or a flat out lies. That's propaganda. And that's what this, and that's what they're supposed to memorize, mesmerize you. That's why they keep repeating it over and over and over because uh, statistically, the more they repeat something, the more you're apt to believe it. Okay, well, it must be true because it keeps on appearing. Well, if the lie keeps the same lie, keep, that's, they, I noticed that when, when a new topic of conversation comes out for the Democrats, they all have it uh, immediately. They must get it by email from, uh, must email every, all the Democrats because they all say the same thing. The same words they say. Like, uh, uh, well, I forget, uh, I've seen it happen like six, seven times now. They all, you can go from one channel to the next channel to the next channel to the next person, next person, who are all Democrats. They all say exactly the same thing. <laughs> Why do they all, all of a sudden come to say the same exact words? Well, because they're giving them those words to say. All together. It's propaganda. It's lies. It's lies. Turn it off. Okay. Trying to convince you of things that you don't want to be convinced of. Let's go back and finish this thing. And Moses, what happened? And, 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 and he, as Moses, cast it on the ground, and it became a serpent. And Moses rec uh, fled from before it. Why did Moses flee from before the serpent? Because he recognized it. You don't, fly, you don't run, if it was a little puppy dog, would he run from a little puppy dog? No. Okay. No. If it was a cat, just sitting there, would you run from a cat? No. no. But a snake, the snake he ran from, how come? He recognized it for what it was. How, how do we know that? It's, uh, he, he recognized it, he acknowledged it, and he fled from before it. Moses literally saw the sin, the snake, that was inside him. Because that was his rod, which means it was his sin. Oh, and now, once it was out of him, where he could see it, he could realize he ran from it because he could see it was evil. Oh, yeah. So his evil thoughts, God had formed into a, a snake for him to see, and then he could see how evil it was. Now, see, that's the same thing with you. Okay, uh, you ask uh, uh, other people about, well, how did I do this, that sort, and so on, because you don't know because you're you, you. But they are on the outside, they know, okay? But lots of times, the biggest problem we have, like uh, if you have a complaint or psych psychologically you have a problem, okay? But, uh, but you, you don't know why you have a problem like that, okay? And you keep having the same problem, but you don't know why you're having this problem. Then one day, you sit down and talk to somebody, and all of a sudden it kind of comes out of you, why? Ah! All of a sudden, you can see the problem because you can't see it inside yourself. You have to see it 
you have to be able to place it outside yourself. That's what a psychotherapist does. It gets you to place your problems outside yourself so that you can see the problem. Because if you can't see that you have a problem, how can you fix it? If you don't have, you're walking around doing all kind of babble, you know it's wrong, but I don't know why. And so I keep. But if you can't see why you're 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 doing that, then you're not ever going to be able to fix it. So what the psychologists are doing is they're getting you to to uh, exercise that, uh, ex exteriorize your thoughts, so that you can look at them yourself and see them. And then once you see your thought, your thoughts, you can you will realize if you're a Christian the evil, the the, the difference in the evil. Isn't that right? Yes, sir. So what happened is this: Moses fled from it because he now realized how evil those thoughts were. Where before he had them and didn't know it. He didn't know they were evil, okay? Because he'd eaten of a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. We all we all have done that. And it, and it became a serpent, and Moses recognized it, and he fled from before it. Uh, Moses literally saw the sin snake that was inside him, now externalized, and visibly out, and visible outside of himself, and Moses immediately discerned that it was evil. That's one thing Adam and Eve didn't do. They couldn't see outside themselves. They ate of the, of the single fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, and that was it. They didn't see they couldn't see any evil because it was all still. They needed to get it externalized. They needed to external. If they had to be able to externalize it, then they could see it. That's what Moses did here. He got his sin externalized. Bang! Then he saw it immediately. And he fled from it. And the Lord said to Moses, after he had, he had this snake is withering on the ground, and the Lord, the Lord said to Moses, Put forth thine hand and take it. By the tail. Whoa. Think of that. You got a slithering snake out there you realize is evil. And, and God said, put forth thine hand and take it by the tail. You take it by the tail because if it bites you, that's poison. It's liable to kill you. So you take it by the tail. Okay. Now, what, wait a minute. Now, what does that mean? First thing, what, what uh, the Lord said to Moses, put forth thine hand. That's power. That was a command. That was a command. He's commanding you to do exactly the same thing. Okay. To see your sin, and then put forth your hand, your your power, and take it, that is, in the Hebrew, seize it, fasten upon it, get possession, possession of it. See, you have to do something. You have to get possession of it, and take it by the tail. So you have to obey God, and take it by the tail. That's your addictions. You're walking around here, most of you people got addictions of one sort or another, that have that, that are got you... They command you. You don't command them. They command you. And those addictions are really little voices that you you don't really perhaps recognize their voices, but they're fallen angels. They're evil spirits inside you, devils. And devils. That's where they live, folks. Sorry, don't live out in the air someplace. And that's stupidity. That's uh, childishness. So what happened here is this. And he, Moses, that Moses, uh, who is a, an empowered instrument of, uh, he's a servant of God. Moses is a servant of God. He's empowered of God. Uh, obediently put forth his hand. He obeyed. He obediently put forth his hand. He exercised his power and caught it. He did it. Moses did it. Now, big things happen now. Because Moses put forth his hand and caught it. He did it. Now, he sees he caught it. Look at, let's look at footnote number five in the back. Let me, let me do number four first because what we're seeing, what we're seeing this thing that was separated from us, the sin is separated from us, that's what number four, four is all about. James says, James 1 verses 1, 21 and 22 says this, Wherefore, lay apart, that means separate from yourself as Moses did himself, the snake, the more for, wherefore lay apart all filthiness, moral dirtiness, and superfluity, that superabundance of naughtiness, badness, depravity, evil, malice, and wickedness. Lay that all apart, okay, by discerning the difference between good and evil, unlike Adam and Eve, who did not. And receive with meekness 
the engrafted word, the implanted word, which is able to save your souls, which is able to save. Save means heal your souls, preserve your souls, make whole. Because right now, you've been separated from the Holy Spirit. Ah, here, this is something that, that, that no one seems to pick up on. <clears throat> I'm going to draw a spirit for you. Now a spirit, remember Legion? Legion, Jesus said, what is thy name to Legion who, who is living inside this, this crazy d d man? And uh, Legion said, uh, my name is Legion for we are many. And another, uh, another setting has uh, uh, many devils. Many devils. That's a devil's a spirit. So what we have here is we have this, 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 this. This is this is this is this. this, this. <laughs> These are all the spirits of uh, addiction, addicting you to crack or to coke or to uh, drugs or drinking, alcohol. These are all spirits. That's, in other words, what I'm saying is these are all individual spirits. What is a spirit? Well, uh, Psalm 104:4 says a spirit is an angel. God made the spirits angels. I mean, I'm sorry, they made the angels spirits. Uh, Hebrews 1 7 says the same thing, twice in the Bible. Angels are spirits. Okay? Now, these are all spirits, but they all have one thing in common. They all think a lot. Now, one thing thinks, thinks oh, it's okay to do uh, 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 a crack, for example. Okay? And, what the, and then the spirit over here said, Rachel, yeah, yeah, well, crack is good, and the guy should always do it. He's agreeing with that. And then we have another spirit over here saying, yes, do crack all the time, you know, whatever. And then we have another spirit over here. See, notice they all have, they, they all think kind of in common about a certain thing. So you have a bunch of spirits who all have common thoughts. And on top of it, you have legion. Because he was, for we are many. There were many. So there's always a head spirit. So this is the head spirit. Now it was legion here in this small picture. And the rest of them were all common thoughts. And there were how many in legion? 6,000. Because that was a that was why they used the name legion, because it says it it, it, it defines a uh, Roman uh, legion, six thousand, all making this guy crazy. He was running around naked. Remember this? He was a he was a man living in the tombs in in, in the graveyard of of thoughts, and he was running around pulling his, no clothes on, and he was naked and screaming and shouting. Wouldn't shave. Wouldn't this that. Nothing dirty else and strong and did terrible things and he was just a nut, an absolute crazy man. And Jesus said to this spirit, the singular, what is thy name? And he said, Legion, for we are many. Many, and then another one says many devils. Now, devils are Spirits, they're fallen angels. Okay, so now that's one spirit. Now who's Satan? Well, Satan is the god of this world uh, in two, uh, 2 Corinthians 2, 4. He's the head of all the spirits, all the evil spirits. That means that this is the spirit of uh, addiction And over here, we have the spirit of theft. And over here, we have the spirit of uh, rape. A lot of these little angels go along for that. And over here, we have the spirit of and over here we have the spirit of 
But all these spirits come under because he's the spirit of sin. That's how it's really set up. That's, ha that's in our own heads. It's called a, a strongholds. Okay? It's where they all get together. This is a stronghold. We're going to come to that. This is a stronghold. This is a stronghold. That's a stronghold. But then these are all strong. It's like being in the military. You have, put, you have, you have uh, uh, squads, and then you have platoons, and, you have, and it goes up and up and up, well, each one under a, under a commander. But the top one is the ace general up on top. There's only one top guy. His name is Satan. Legion, he was just a minor guy. He was probably like a lieutenant or something. Who knows? That's happening inside you. Those voices, they're not just all by themselves telling you, oh, I'm going to do this crack. You've got all kinds of guys in there. That's how come you can't just say no, because you got all kinds of guys yelling, trying to influence you to do these bad things. They're spirits. Now, I've never showed you that before, but... <laughs> That'll make you think a little bit. <laughs> okay, go back now. And so Moses uh, uh, put forth his hand and caught it. He seized it. He seized his sinful, Lucifer, Satan, influencing thoughts, devils, demons, unclean spirits, fallen angels. Unclean spirits. What do you think an unclean spirit is? It's a fallen angel. What's wrong with you? Put it together. And what happened to that, though? Oh, here's the important thing now. I wanted to tell you. This is the big deal. So he put forth his hand and he caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. We don't have a rod, do we? No. Okay. Okay. Now what happened? So and, and, he, uh, and he, this Moses, put forth his hand and caught it. And it became a rod in his hand. What was it composed of, that rod? A lot of spirits. A lot of spirits. A lot of those guys, the little guys there, put together. But he, what he did is when he caught the rod in his hand, it stiffened up and became a rod in his hand. They were all compacted together. Now, unclean spirits, fallen angels, have power. So what he did is he had, he had uh, God had showed him, uh, led him to eject all his unclean spirits, all right, so that he could see it. This is a picture for him, all right, of his own unclean spirits. And they were all there in that slimy snake. And he put forth his hand on the tail and grabbed it, and it became a rod in his hand. A rod of what? A rod of power. A rod of power. You see, once you control the evil inside you, man, you have power. You want power? All those charismatic, charismatic people, I always think they all want this, that, and power, and all they really want is your money. But uh, they, uh, uh, but the power is what? The power you have is in controlling the evil inside you. That's your power. Now let me show you something. What happened then? And it became a, a rod, a powerful rod in his hand. It was a, a rod of great power. Let's look at this thing now and see what, what he did there. Number, put down number five in the back. He, he sees the sinful Lucifer, the devil's demons, unclean spirits, fallen angels, and I refer now to uh, or angels or spirits so you know what's going on, bringing them collectively together into a stronghold under his command because Moses was controlling the rod. They are the rod of his power. And he was control under his command into captivity by exercising his own self-control. That's temperance in Galatians 5.23. And they, that's the devils, became fully obedient to Christ. That's the anointing of Moses. When you start controlling that, some of you are trying to control it, others of you are not. But when you start trying to control it, because once you start trying, you continue, you eventually will, controlling the sin in your lives, when you're being able to say no, man, you got power. And you said no to this one, and you say no to this one, and you said no to this one, you got power. 
That's the power. The power is in you. Let me read the, uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter, uh, 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 footnote A here, uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 4 through 6. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, that's fleshly, but mighty through God. The weapons of our warfare are mighty through God to the pulling down, the demolition of strongholds. Wait a minute. Each of these things I've drawn you up here, these, these uh, uh, we don't know what to call them. They're just a spirit. They're actually a stronghold. That's a stronghold because you've got, let's say, he had your 6,000 fallen angels who kind of all thought the same way. Man, that's a lot of power. That's an angel, number one, and they all think the same way. That's a lot of power. Yeah. For weapons are not carnal, not war, uh, weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty to the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds in the Greek means fortifications, it means castles, it means figuratively arguments. 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 Argu these guys are arguing with you. Oh, I don't want to do this. Oh, I want you to do this. I don't want to do this. And you get a chorus of 6,000 uh, uh, voices uh, in some way exercising influence inside you saying, yes, yes, you want to do that. And you're going to say, well, maybe I should. Uh, yeah, yeah. If you had 6,000 people telling you that to do something you didn't want to do, guess what? you probably do it. Remember 6,000 people telling you, don't do that crack. Guess what's going to happen? You probably are not going to do that crack. You know, if somebody, you got to see, you're looking in the face of 6,000 people saying, don't do that. You're not going to do it. Well, look at this guy who was walking around crazy. He had 6,000 people inside him saying, do it. Do it. Do it. Do crazy. Do everything. That's what you got inside of you. And many of you others. But the only reason I picked out on one is because he's actually trying. He's actually trying to bring his, his uh, demons into control. And, but the problem is he had a bunch of demons in him. I don't know if he had 6,000, but he had a bunch. Because I know, he used to work for me years ago. But now he's trying to control them. He ain't doing a real good job, but he's getting some advancement there, okay? You follow me? He's actually trying to do it. He's exercising. How about the rest of you? Are you trying to control your demons? You're just saying, hey, yeah, let's go get the crack now. We're all done with that Lionel talking all the time. Let's go out and get whacked out again. We're going to steal a few more things from the mission, and then we'll just have a good time. Who are you listening to there? You listening to God? Is God saying, yeah, go out and get whacked out? What do you think you're listening to? You're the, you've only got two big voices inside you. It's either God or it's the, uh, Satan. Well, who do you think you're listening to when he's telling you, go out and get, let's get whacked out, let's go crack, let's have a good time, and let's steal this and that, and whatever, and oh, nobody will ever. Who do you think, is God telling you to do that? Well, then who do you think, who do you think is bossing you around? Who do you think you're working for? Who do you think you're serving? You're serving Satan. Your entire body, soul, and mind is serving Satan. says here, pulling down strongholds, the, casting down imaginations. In the Greek, that means thoughts. Casting down bad thoughts in the Greek, okay? Cast down imaginations in every high thing that exalted itself. That's prideful now. Exalted itself against the knowledge of God. And notice what it says here. Literally, it says this. I bring it into captivity every thought. Why are you going to bring a thought into captivity? It's intended it's God saying, telling you to do that. Bring into captivity every thought. What's he talking about? He's talking about fallen angels. He's talking about the evil that's in you. The sin that's in you. Bring it into captivity. You, got, you can't get rid of it. You just got to control it. You just got to control it. And you can't just suddenly start, turn around, and next day start controlling it. It takes a while to get a hold of those things. They're squirming around. Like if you, uh, if you see someone trying to, uh, how about 6,000 squirmy snakes? How are you going to reach down and control 6,000 squirmy snakes? It's going to take you a while to get all those things in the, under control. You follow what I'm saying? But you're going to get that under control. But you've got to try it. If you don't try it, 
You're a waste. You're going to be a waste to God and a waste to yourself. No good. That's why uh, and, and it was a... Uh, uh, <laughs> it was what? It was uh, without form and void. And darkness was upon the face of the deep. You like it there? Because you're not saved. That's where you are. Casting down, I'm going to back to the footnote 8, and casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing it into captivity every thought. Fallen angel. Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Now the last verse is very interesting. And it says this. And having in a readiness that means being ready to, having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Oh, so it's saying this. When you get control of yourself, then you can start helping other people get control of themselves. And it's also talking about a judgment and readiness to revenge. All disobedience went right away. Oh, I just got saved, so you stopped doing this. And no, no, no. When your obedience is fulfilled, when you have become finally obedient to Christ, the Christ inside you, the Christ covering you, when you finally become obedient to that, then you can bring others to the same obedience. But you got to do it first. You got to do it first. Notice this. When Moses obeyed God, he achieved, didn't he? Now, what happened is this when he put forth his hand and caught it, it became a rod in his hand. And then we have the final verse, that they may believe, God said that they may believe, and believe means be firm, faithful, or trust, that may, the people, when you have that rod in your hand and you're controlling your sin, like I'm controlling my sin, my, my sinful desires, to a, a great deal, not fully, but to a great deal, okay? And my staff can see that. They can also see that I do sin. Uh, not as much as I used to, by any means, okay? But I'm controlling, to some part anyway, my sinful desires. Because my sinful desires are, hey, baby, wine, women, and song, let's have a good time. But I can't do that anymore. See, and I'm controlling that to a certain point. I'm controlling that. And that's giving me the power. To continue, look at the power is the revelations that God's giving us, giving me, and to me as the mailman to you, revelations. I couldn't do that if I was out there sitting and getting whacked out every night. Like some, most of my staff is, quite frankly. It's a lack of understanding, but it's also a lack of wanting to do the right thing. you got to do something. You can't just get saved and sit there on your butt. What do you got to do? You got to start getting rid of all that bad stuff. You got to start controlling that bad stuff. It ain't going to go away. It's, it's buried. It's there. It ain't going to go away until you become one with Christ. When you die, then all that other garbage is going to be gone like it never existed. But until then, it's walking around and you're in a graveyard of all those memories and thoughts that you have, the bad things that you did, the bad things that you want to do, all those things are all there around you and they're all talking to you. And they're all trying to convince you to do what they want you to do rather than what God wants you to do. Who do you want to serve? You want to serve God? Make up your mind. Then serve God. If you want to serve Satan, you don't have to make up your mind. You can just go ahead and live like, live like you're living. What's the difference? Well, the reward's the difference. The great and vast and wonderful reward is the big difference.
that they may believe that the Lord God of their fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob hath appeared unto thee. Appeared means, now notice it again, not in the Greek or Hebrew, in text it means manifested himself, revealed himself, and how does God reveal himself? In revelation. That's how God reveals himself. That's why it's called revelations, revelations. Now that means not the book of Revelation, it means in terms of what comes to you when you're reading the Bible. Are you getting revelations from God? Because the deeper and closer you come to God, just like sailing on a ship and coming to, toward shore, the promised land, the closer we get to the promised land, the more things I can detail and see, more details I can see of the land. So from a mile out, I can't see, the, kind of, but then I get half mile, oh yeah, I see that. Then I get a quarter mile and a third of a mile and I get a hundred yards, and pretty soon I'm seeing all the details. Revelations. Amen. Are you getting re details, revelations? You need to get revelations, but you can't get them unless, number one, you believe. You've got to believe. If you believe, and, and what? And do something. Amen. What happened here, the, the third footnote again, uh, uh, fourth footnote, wherefore lay apart, that is lay apart from yourself as Moses did, all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which was able to save your souls. Be doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. Because if you just sit there and say, listen to me, and then you go out there and don't change and don't do anything at all, and go ahead doing your dope and your stealing and lying and cheating and all other kind of things that you're doing, guess what? You are here, but not a doer. But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving, because you're deceiving yourself out of heaven. Pretty stupid when it comes right down to it. You're deceiving yourselves out of heaven. Deceiving your own selves. Deceiving means deluding, in the Greek, beguiling your own selves. Praise God. So, I am a clothed... <laughs> I am a clothed thought of God. How about you? Yeah! Yes. Are you a clothed thought of God? I yes, am. you are. Yes, you are. <laughs> and one day, we'll take our clothes off. We'll come out of this shell, this body, this clothing. We'll come out, because the body is a clothing too. The body yes, will come out of this. <laughs> Jesus Christ said in John 3, how do, you, how do you come up? Well, here's how you start. You get saved, you get born again. How do you get born again? John 3, 3. Jesus Christ said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. In other words, you ain't never going to get there if you're not born again. That's right. I like it when I say ain't a lot. I was taught, I'm an English teacher, actually. I was taught, I mean, part, well, part of it. Anyway, and I was taught not to say ain't because it was not in the, but uh, it's very effective. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus Christ said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, I want you to just think about yourself. Don't raise your hand. Don't say anything. How many here really, really want to go to heaven? Because the choice is heaven or hell. And when you have a choice of heaven or hell, what do you, you want to go to heaven? Now you need to think about that because the other thing by default is it doesn't matter if you have no choice at all by default you go to hell which is a type and shadow of this world magnified a thousand million times talk about bad and nasty that's the deal so i'm going to ask is there anybody here today who would like to receive jesus christ as your lord and savior and go to heaven with us please raise your hand and we'll say a prayer with you anybody at all Who's not never said that prayer before? Have you said? Would you like to say that prayer today? Sure. Have you said the prayer before? Probably so. Huh? Yeah, probably so. 
Probably so. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm going to give everybody the opportunity to do that as well. In a moment, in a moment, I'm going to ask everybody to stand and say the prayer with me. So, we're, because you're all angels, uh, and, and all that garbage about you, that, that, that this is blasphemy and all that other stuff. Well, that's all stupidity. They just don't know yet. Okay. It's not. It's 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 not stupidity. It's ignorance. They just don't understand yet. They've not got the revelations. Okay. Now, either I'm wrong or right, but if I'm right, man, good things are going to happen and bad things. And I don't want you to be participants of the bad things. So I'm going to ask you all to stand in a moment. Don't do it now. I'm going to stand and say this prayer with me and act like a chorus of heavenly angels escorting the people who do say this prayer to heaven. Because they have to walk through. We're taking them to the door. That's Jesus Christ. They have to walk through it themselves. They have to say the prayer themselves. Now, those people in the Internet congregation, of which there may be, you know, two and a half or, uh, or 2,000 or 200 or 2 million, because it's going out to every place in the world right now, um, you can say this prayer with us and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior uh, if you're willing to stand with us and say it. Okay, let's all stand. And those in the Internet congregation, if you'd like to re receive Jesus Christ today, please stand with us. All right. Now, if you haven't stood, not, well, if you're in a car someplace, you can't. But if you haven't stood, when you, you could have stood, then you don't even have to bother saying the prayer because it's not going to do any good. Why is that? Because you're not obedient. You're not willing to be obedient. See, I asked you to stand. You didn't stand. Obedience. God's looking for obedient people. He's looking. He's not looking for people who want to do their own deal. That's what we've already been doing. We spent a lifetime doing our own deal. Now we're looking for. Now he's looking for people who want to serve him to do his deal, not ours. So let's all say this prayer now together, shall we? Father God, I confess I'm a sinner. Please forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ died on the cross and paid the penalty for all my sins and was resurrected. Thank you, Lord. Father God, please send your son, your seed, your love into my heart to be the Lord and Savior of my life. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Please be seated. Please be seated. Please be seated. I'm going to take tithes and offerings now. Okay. I want to take you and you. That side and this side. Please be seated. I'm going to do tithes and offerings now. After we're done with tithes and offerings, I'm going to have a little prayer of blessing, and you can all <laughs> we'll have a nice meal. Why are we doing the tithes and offerings after this message? Well, you came here. You wouldn't come here if you didn't want something from the mission, or you wouldn't be here. Well, I want you to want to be blessed. I want you to want to be blessed, okay? And the blessing is if, for the obedient people who do tithe, you tithe is 10% of your profits, the profits of your last week or month or however which way, all right? Uh, that's the guideline, all right? Uh, those who obey God, God said, I'll open the windows of heaven above them so that they will not be able to contain the blessings that will flow down upon them. And if you disobey God, he said something about that too. <laughs> something not quite so nice. He said, this is a quote, <laughs> well, would you disobey God? I'm not sure. I've got that perfect. So God's not real happy with disobedient people, especially in his own army, because you're all in the army of God. Uh, and because the more obedient you are, the more responsibility he can give you, the more things you can do for the kingdom. 
some people are going to be ruling, let's say, exemplified in the Bible, uh, five cities and some people ten cities and some people this place and some people that place and we go into planets and stellar systems and so forth and so on. And other people are going to be mowing lawns because it's all a matter of how willing are you, how obedient are you. If you're obedient and study the Word of God, then you will get more responsibility. The more you understand about God, the more responsibility you will have. Because that's who can get. That's the same thing I do here at the Rescue Commission. I give responsibility to those people who I think can handle, the, uh, have enough ability to handle the responsibility and do it properly. If someone doesn't have the responsibility, they don't get any. Simple. Same thing with God. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ, thank you, Lord, for this word today. Thank you for your, the happiness and joy that you put into, brought into our lives, made available to each and every one of us. Our free, free salvation. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, amen. One last thing before we go. Fred, will you please stand and bless the food with a, a blessing for us? Loudly. <laughs> Amen, amen, amen. We have a nice meal right now coming up uh, for everybody, and then bring someone next week. If we're still here, we'll preach it again.